Okay, so I think by now pretty much every one of you have probably heard of the CrowdStrike oh, situation where there was a Windows update, it crashed a bunch of corporate systems and government systems and so on, and it caused a big hullabaloo and killed a bunch of IT guys nice weekends on Friday. So basically CrowdStrike kind of focuses on security for many systems it was actually a company i was recommended to look at for work to kind of get my foot in the door after i finished up with school so i've kind of held off after like and like seeing that they've got some diversity hire things going on it's like uh maybe not in my best interest but so yeah um crowdstrike Stops, stopped Windows over the weekend, so no business. Hospitals were down. Even emergency service number lines were down. So basically, it came down to pushing out an update for one of their systems that basically caused an error in boot because the way that the CloudStrike software that CrowdStrike uses for everything works is they've basically got this driver in there that will boot up. And so at a reboot, it resets the driver for Crowd for Cloud Strike and then boots it up. Well, when your driver's broken, <clears throat> you can't quite do it that well. And it just kind of goes to show if you've got the right stuff, you can end up putting in malicious code into your anti your security system built on your system and cause a bunch of trouble for systems across the board. So um, Brave notes, like by its lovely AI-generated summary, um, banks, news outlets, and so on were down, various government agencies. And so you can see like a whole dependency on this one company. So we'll take a quick preview of their oh, site. You know, you've got your one unified platform for complete protection. AI native platform. Ever, a lot of security companies are touting the AI learning and security stuff in their software now. Sophos has it, CrowdStrike has it apparently too, and a number of others. So you've got leader shares. Let's see. Uh, Sophos is up here on the graph. CrowdStrike is over here. And I don't know. Sophos has their own stuff that like puts them somewhere differently than where CrowdStrike is or CrowdStrike is missing from there. I don't know completely, but yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, CrowdStrike has a bunch of stuff, Falcon identity protection. So the AI, yeah, you get the idea. But it was an update that they pushed. Apparently Microsoft has said that they're not the ones to blame for it. So yeah, CrowdStrike identified the issue as a bug in the memory scanning prevention policy which wasn't detected during testing stages. And also keep in mind that this system is proprietary. So when you're testing stuff out, you are limiting your test your testing group to a much smaller group in this case. So whereas with certain open source systems, yeah, things get through like with the OpenSSH or yeah, OpenSSH project certain vulnerabilities got through and pushed in but the in this but there's a wider audience developer and testing group that you can take advantage of that is able to see these things notice these things and then go through and troubleshoot these things to see what's the solution or what part of the code is working not working in it and people have analyzed this particular one so Fix was basically deleting um, this sys file and rebooting the system or rebooting like 15 times to hope that you get the right condition to where it works itself out. <clears throat> but yeah, as noted, it was like a global outage across like hospitals, banks, airports, and so on. So a bunch of planes were grounded from it. Um, so in 
highlights the importance of thorough testing and simulation of real-world deployment environments to identify potential issues before releasing updates, also underscores the need for robust incident response plans and collaboration between vendors and customers to minimize the impact of such outages. So a lot of these industries have a lot of people that aren't very IT technical, and the IT teams are oftentimes either outsourced or very small. So you kind of run into this, like one point of this is correct for sure, is that thorough testing and simulation of real world environments really helps. So like, are you making sure that like your systems will boot? If you don't take in that into account, then you're doing something wrong. But you also have to take into account the real life usage of the system going on. Because not everyone is going to be as, how should I say, vigilant in how they run their system. I've seen way too many times in too many situations where someone who has access to systems or to information that most other people aren't privy to just leave their systems wide open where anyone can get access to it when they walk away from it for an extended period of time. And that can create issues just like this. So you've got to take those things into account, like real world uses and see how do people actually use this? And in reality, how might they use this? Like for non-technical users, how might they use this that does, that kind of is outside of our use case that we're thinking of? And that's where testing with a limited number of the normies kind of helps to underscore that test bed so that you know what's going on. Hey, I want you to use this like you're using it in your normal workflow. And then we because we're trying to test for issues in case anything happens, hope so that we can hopefully iron out all the kinks in it and avoid any like problems such that our only problems are pretty much going to be anomalies or outliers. But it also underscores another issue that if this many industries were knocked out, that means they're relying on this one dependency of CrowdStrike for their security. Oh, what is it? For their security, cybersecurity checkbox. So when you look at the number, like they estimate a total of 20% of computers basically went down from this. And again, they're going to be pretty much corporate and government and so on, like airport, bank, financial systems that are going to come break down from this. But it's that one hinge point that makes the difference. So it this also tells you what companies and what parts of industries could be vulnerable if they find an exploit in CloudStrike's software because what ends up happening <clears throat> is if an attacker finds a zero day for Cl CrowdStrike's software, then all of a sudden you've got governments, airlines, banks that are all vulnerable because of that vulnerability. And all of these companies rely on it to check off that box of, yes, I am secure. Whereas if you had a diversity of it and more, well, if you had more diversity in the companies that you're going to or the vendors you're going to for your security, or if you're using your more local guys for your security implementations possibly, then you all create a, how should I say, a diversity in implementations and vulnerabilities. Yes, there some may be more vulnerable than others, but you're not going to have such a wide, juicy target that now attackers can look at because they know how many industries are using it and what kind of industries on top of it. So my big issue with this whole CrowdStrike thing is the fact that now you've painted a juicy target on CrowdStrike as an attack vector for other people. Because just like Google or Apple, if I were to hack into some, if I know that a bunch of celebrities have their nudes on their iCloud, all of a sudden that becomes a juicy target because now I can make millions off of that. 
just like how if I know that everybody relies on this one piece of software, this one company for their security software, then all of a sudden that becomes a juicy target that I can attack. And that becomes a risk all in and of itself. If everybody's using that one thing, it becomes more worth it for an attacker to persistently attack that one thing to try and find a way in because everyone's using it, just like Google and Apple. So like, what, or like, for example, when Google, unbeknownst to everyone, started syncing up passwords and other information with, without user consent to their cloud so that you can sync your information across devices, uh, by default making it, having it opt out, then you automatically have all this information on people and that creates a vector that attackers will want to attack to get that information because now you've got all that information stored up on a singular Google account that can then be leaked out to the world. So attackers are more likely to try to persistently attack that and find vulnerabilities because it's a juicier target than the small guy that has hardly anything that has some pretty decent security. It becomes more worth it, that time investment, which is kind of where you need to risk assess even the security software that you're using. What, what's the customer base that we're dealing with? What is, what is their rate of vulnerability? What, how many vulnerabilities have they had? How many attacks and so on? So that I can know one, do I want to put my most precious data in here? And then is it worth the risk, however high or low that is, of having that taken in case that gets breached or something in what? If something happens to happen, if a happening happens, you know. So you kind of like go, and this is like the Carver technique, like S2 Underground, very, very good resource if you want to like learn different risk assessment and things like that, or even certain privacy things when it comes to radio and picking up on things that way, or for your daily news updates, it takes like two or three minutes. So you would kind of rank that based on it. Like, how critical is this information? How accessible do we want it? Like, can we recuperate from it? You're kind of gauging these things on it. And what's the, vul like, what would more pertain to like this CrowdStrike situation is the vulnerability of it. So if I've got one guy that pushes an update and it breaks everything, then that becomes an issue. Just think back to the NPM, the Node.js library a while ago when Russia first started into Ukraine. Every, a bunch of people lost data because of it, because they were coming from Russian IPs, because all of a sudden you're having your data snookered out because some dude added it as a dependency. One singular developer added it as a dependency. Going back to that idea of being thankless and unnoticed, but everybody's relying it on, on it up here. So now you're killing like a whole bunch of systems because of some dude's political motives. And that becomes a vulnerability in and of itself. So if CrowdStrike happens to do something or that one guy that happens to get in becomes that vector, you have to assess how likely is that to happen. It may be very low in certain situations, but the effect it can have, is it going to be worth that low vulnerability for the considerably high impact it can have on the data that I'm trying to protect. So it comes down to this risk assessment that you need people in. And a lot of salespeople are gonna be like, well, here's our thing, here's whatever. And they're gonna use all these different sales gimmicks to try and sell you a package that in a lot of ways may be less effective. Like any VPN that, any VPN sponsor that you look at, when you look at the, uh, n their number of trackers, how much have they been subpoenaed or had different governments ask them for data? 
how often have they been able to provide that data or have they had to tell them to go blow? Are they being forced to log data on customers? And what kind of breaches have they had in their systems and have they been transparent about it? You kind of have all these different things that you have to look at. And so you get Joe Schmo YouTuber that promotes this VPN service and doesn't take these things into account. It's like, well, money's money. And so all of a sudden a VPN service is getting money off of like Joe Schmoes that don't know anything about dealing with VPNs and actually having the privacy that they're being sold that may be less private than they're thinking it is. They're just getting a service that lets them watch Netflix in other countries at that point without any of the added benefit of a VPN. So again, CrowdStrike is a big learning tool. Yes, thorough testing would be helpful, but you also have to look at the risk assessment of the risk of cho everybody choosing the same exact service to run their cybersecurity because all of a sudden, if everybody's using the same vendor, how do you know the same vendor isn't going to be attacked because that would be an easier vector to attack, just like the Snowflake situation where every cell provider and cloud provider, what have you, were was using this one AI platform or cloud platform to an analyze all the data that they had. And now all of a sudden, because of it, this one dude gets into every system and exfiltrates but a bunch of data from all that one all that one company's customers that they can then use and leak and so on and so forth. Okay. So keep that in mind. And finally, as I close things out, I'm not I'm not quite going to have that video out yet, but I finally surpassed that 1000. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get it up that 1,000 up to 1,500. And I will see you guys later.